In terms of the empiricism, we take advantage of all of the criticisms along the way to make things better and better and better. Where we still are falling behind is adequate explanations from a theoretical perspective that the consensus agrees upon. And that's because we're dealing with something which is really, really difficult to try to understand. Like we're using consciousness to try to understand itself. It's not so easy, but at least from an empirical perspective, there's definitely been improvements. Dean, what do you consider as the singular best evidence for the reality of psi phenomena? I would say it's always our personal experience. So, it, I mean, this is true across the board. And as, as my friend Jessica Utz, a statistician, has said, in, in talking to the, the accumulated groups of statisticians in the world, uh, the evidence is very clear from a, a statistical point of view. It's basically the same as, as any other thing, that we only see it as anomalous because uh, we don't have a good theory yet. So what would convince you, speaking to statisticians? More evidence, more statistics, or a personal experience? And the answer is very clear, personal experience. So my personal experience, most of it is in the laboratory. So, I mean, experiment and experience are basically the same thing. One's just more formal than the other. So I have a formal type of experience in a laboratory where I set things up. I know what, what is going on, you know, what the controls are and everything else. And we get a significant result. That's what convinces me. Within the different classes of studies, I would say that the presentiment studies are, are very persuasive because they've been replicated many times with different labs and the Gansfeld telepathy. Experiment. Describe each one quickly. So Gansfeld telepathy is a simple method where you have four choices. Somebody's mentally sending you one of one of the four images and you have to say what the answer is. So the, the, the cumulative results uh, and the analysis of that is sextillion to one. So that the odds against the answer basically this happens. Uh, presentiment is looking at physiological responses to future targets, typically ones that are very emotional or very calm, that are selected immediately before the image appears by a quantum process. So it should not be possible to know what's about to happen. And yet between a half a second to two to three seconds beforehand, the body begins to change physiologically in accordance with what that future event is going to be. So it's been replicated something like 48 times, it's seven or eight different laboratories. We see it again and again. So that's something like a precognitive but unconscious effect because people are not asked to do anything. They're just asked to look at the pictures and respond to it. So I'd say th those two categories are among the most persuasive that I've seen. What kind of controls do you have? For example, in the present one, uh, it, would, it would seem very easy to have some sort of a subconscious cues that are being given or who knows what. What kind of controls do you have to, to uh, avoid some of the obvious uh, error points? Right. So you have a large pool of pictures, which are typically the stimuli, but it, it could be sounds. It could be any, any kind of stimulus you can imagine. The stimulus that is actually selected, nobody knows in advance what that's going to be until it occurs. So, it, it, so I know I, I can press a button, and then five seconds later, something is going to happen. Maybe it's very calm, maybe it's very emotional. That selection doesn't happen until milliseconds before it actually appears. And again, using a quantum process, which should not be predictable. So one of the criticisms then is, well, maybe it's like the gambler's fallacy. So you've, you've done three trials in a row, they've all been calm, and you're thinking, well, the next one's got to be emotional because that's what's going to happen. So you, you're, you would naturally become more aroused before that. But that has been specifically looked at in these experiments because it's an obvious way of thinking about what might be going on, and that is not what we see in these experiments. So it is, it's not the gambler's fallacy, and it's not a whole long list of other possible reasons which we're all well aware of when we do these experiments. So we've looked for uh, conventional ways of understanding why we get these anticipatory effects, and it's not that. So what are we left with? It's like in all of these experiments, we're left with something after going through the list of possible other explanations, 
we're left with something that looks a lot like a psychic effect. How do you deal with the charge that in all the psychic research over the last 150 years, essentially, you've made no progress? Well, we look at things like cumulative effects in, in the major classes, eight or 10 different classes of experiments. Do we see cumulative effects that are showing more and more and more significant results and replications by different people? And the answer is yes. So we're dealing with typically small, subtle effects, and we need huge amounts of data and lots of replications. So in terms of the empiricism, that is definitely advanced. And we take advantage of all of the criticisms along the way to make things better and better and better. Where we still are falling behind is adequate explanations from a theoretical perspective that the consensus agrees upon. And that's, that's just, that, that's because we're dealing with something which is really, really difficult to try to understand. Like we're using consciousness to try to understand itself. It's not so easy, uh, but at least from an empirical perspective, there's definitely been improvements. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like and comment below. You can support Closer to Truth by subscribing. Closer to Truth is now accepting your tax-exempt donations. Please come to closertotruth.com forward slash donate. Thank you very much for supporting us and thanks for watching.